What is up, nerds? Welcome back. You may have noticed a bit of a shift on this channel recently, moving away from gear reviews and more into travel documentaries. Showing off the most beautiful parts of this planet is the reason I got into photography in the first place, and that's what really speaks to me, and that's why there's been a little bit of a shift towards more travel-oriented films. But we're gonna shift back today because there's been something on my mind while I'm out in the field, and I think it's worth talking about. There's a trend in landscape photography to grab the widest lens possible to try and fit as much into the frame as you can. I'm extremely guilty of this myself, and in fact, one of the most watched videos on this entire channel is my embarrassing love letter to the 16 to 35, and to this day, that is still hands down one of my most used lenses. However, more and more, I'm finding that my absolute best landscape shots are shot on telephoto lenses. So this is why you need to carry your 70 to 200 when you're outside. Now, of course, good gear in the bag is a key piece to the puzzle, but the real secret to taking a project from good to great is the editing. I love going out to shoot, but for me, my biggest shortcomings in my content is that little extra razzle-dazzle that comes from having an incredible library of assets. When I need to kick a project into high gear, there is no better option than Motion Array. You've heard me talk about it in the past, but Motion Array now is better than ever before. They have over 10,000 graphics, vectors, icons, patterns, and much more. Each graphic is handmade by award-winning designers and completely customizable so that you can make it your own. And the best part is that you can use these curated graphics anywhere. Corporate videos, Instagram posts, and client work. Streamline your color grading, keying, sharpening, or stylizing, whether you edit in Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or even Avid. Motion Array has over 50 powerful plugins that are included in every plan to upgrade your workflow, no matter which editor you use. The entire thing is membership based, meaning you pay once per year and boom, you get everything already included. No additional fees to use the assets for any project, anywhere, anytime. And perhaps the best part of all, you can take Motion Array for a test drive for free, no payment required. Sign up for a free trial and get hundreds of free assets to try out with zero commitment. Head to motionarray.com today to check it out and get on the right track to take your content from good to amazing. So first things first, I'm not gonna narrow this down to the 70-200 f4 or f2.8 specifically because I feel that they both have their place and they both have pros and cons depending on what you're doing. For extremely long missions, I absolutely love the f4 because it weighs nothing. But if I'm not as worried about bag weight or I'm planning on shooting in low light, the f2.8 version is a perfect choice. They're both fantastic and really you can't go wrong with either, so I'm not going to pick a favorite. The most important and perhaps most obvious reason to carry a telephoto lens while hiking is of course because of wildlife. I can't tell you how many times I've gone out to photograph landscapes and had a surprise animal encounter, and in fact my absolute favorite type of photography is what I call environmental portraits. The focal lengths between 70 and 200 millimeters are absolutely perfect for these as it allows you to showcase the animal itself while still having enough room in the frame to show the surrounding landscape. This is by far my favorite way to photograph nature. Everyone loves a nice glamorous wildlife headshot, but to me, the most interesting thing about animals is seeing where they live and the environment they exist in. A 70 to 200 is the absolute perfect lens for that because you can have some animal and some landscape around it. And some of my favorite shots of my career have happened by pure chance while out on a hike, specifically because I had a 70 to 200 in my bag and I was ready. This also works well for human elements in your photos. Wide open landscape shots with small people in them are fun, but with the 70 to 200, you can really bring the background in closer and make the landscape look so dramatic. It makes the mountains look absolutely massive, and it can really bring an incredible sense of scale to the scene. Beyond wildlife and human elements, telephoto compression is a very underappreciated tool in the arsenal for landscape photographers as well. It's easy to see a big sweeping view like the Tetons and want to shoot it as wide as possible, and honestly those still make for some stunning images, but one of my favorite things to do is to shoot tighter and sort of 
dissect the landscape. The details of mountains are one of my favorite things about being outdoors and the tighter view of a telephoto lens allows me to really focus in on the textures that get me so excited. I love seeing the snow spin off ridgelines and the textures of snow-covered trees. I love to see the sunlight hitting cliffs and clouds moving through valleys. These all can be captured at a wide focal length, but they're likely competing with other elements. A telephoto allows you to focus on those things, literally zoom in and isolate them so they can be a star rather than a supporting character. In much the same way that telephoto compression makes the mountains look big and dramatic with people or wildlife in the frame, it does the same thing with clouds over mountains. The mountains look big, but the clouds look even more bigger. And as the saying goes, more bigger is more gooder. And the same thing goes for the moon. Wide shots with a small moon in them are really cool, but using telephoto compression to draw that moon in and make it look enormous is a fantastic tool to have in your arsenal. I'll often plan ahead and position myself intentionally for moon photography, but there have been many instances where the moonrise was a bit of a surprise for me as I was already out on a hike. And in those instances, I'm always very glad to have a 70 to 200 in my backpack by default. I'll admit it's kind of cheating to talk about a drone in this instance, but the newer consumer drones like the DJI Mavic 3 now feature telephoto lenses, including a 70 millimeter and a 166 millimeter option. And all of this applies to that as well. Not only are the longer lenses a great way to acquire some extra reach when you're bumping up against the range or flight time limitations of your drone, but the same telephoto compression benefits apply even when you're shooting from the air. However, due to the nature of telephoto compression, it tends to be a bit of an optical illusion where the background objects appear to be more zoomed in than the foreground objects. And with a drone, this is incredible. It makes the parallax drone moves twice as exciting when using one of the longer lenses, as it really exacerbates the motion between the foreground and the background elements, whether this is mountains, a human, or even the moon. This has been a bit of a personal journey for me over the last few years, because the start of my photography journey was almost singularly defined by wide angle landscape shots. I would say upwards of 50% of my landscape shots were taken on the 16 to 35 G Master, and still to this day, that tends to be my default lens when shooting outdoors. But more and more, I'm finding myself reaching for the 70 to 200, and I absolutely love what happens when I put that lens on my camera. I've made it a point to never leave home without it, and it is always worth the extra weight in my bag. I hope you found this video useful, and hopefully this will inspire you to consider longer focal lengths for your next hike. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.